In a previous video, I showed you how to derive the kinematic equations. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to problem solve using those kinematic equations, uh, problems that involve projectile motion in one dimension. So first, let's write down those kinematic equations. <clears throat> so first, we have V final equals V initial plus A. Then v final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X and then X final equals X initial plus V initial T plus 1 AT squared. And since we're doing projectile motion in one dimension, we're going to be doing things in the y direction. So I'll just change these variables to y to make the understanding a little easier. So let's set up a 1D projectile motion problem. So let's say that you are Gonna throw something up in the air with some initial velocity. Let's call it 9.8 meters per second. And you throw it from a height of one meter. And there are a couple things that we could ask. If we wanted to know Let's, let's say that the question asked for the uh, total flight time. of This projectile. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can approach this. So the most direct way. Uh, so first, I guess, let's start by listing out the variables that we know. So we know the initial velocity is positive 9.8 meters per second. <clears throat> we know the initial height is positive one meter. The total flight time, meaning the projectile is going to go up, and then come back down, that would make the final height equal to zero meters. We don't know the final velocity, the impact velocity. We know the acceleration would be due to gravity, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we don't know the time. So the, the main thing that we're solving for is this time. So we have to pick the kinematic equation that would allow us to solve that. So the one that would allow us to solve that directly is the third kinematic equation, y final equals y initial plus v initial t plus 1 half a t squared. So first I'm going to show you how to solve this equation, which is going to involve the quadratic formula. Uh, but then I'm going to show you some different techniques that you can use that will make that could make it a little easier if you're not comfortable with the quadratic formula. So first, if we're solving this equation, Using the quadratic formula, let's move everything to the same side. So this will become zero. I'm going to subtract the y final to the other side, which is going to make this negative delta y. 
okay. And then solving the quadratic formula, so I'll just write that down. So if you have an equation that looks like zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c, then the quadratic formula to solve for x would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. So we have an equation that looks like this, only in our equation, the x squared is t, place the x with t's. This term is the a term in the quadratic formula. This is the b term, and this is the c term. And like I said, the t's are the x's in the quadratic formula. So to solve for the t's in our equation, we would have negative b, which would be negative b initial, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is v negative positive v initial squared minus four times the acceleration, which is negative 9.8 times now the c term, which is this negative delta L. I guess not plugging in numbers yet. So let's just call a as one half a. And then times negative delta y all over two times one half a for acceleration. Okay, now let's plug our numbers in. So the V initial we had was 9.8. So 9.8 squared minus four times one half times negative 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity times negative delta y which is negative one let's check that so y final is zero y initial is one so delta y is zero minus one which equals negative one so the negative delta y will just be positive one. And then we divide that by two times one half times negative 9.8. So now we're dealing with something that's happening in the future. So I'm gonna pick the positive root for this quadratic term. And when you plug this mess into your calculator, you get 2.09 something, which I'm just gonna approximate as 2.1 seconds. Okay, so that's how you would solve this using the quadratic formula. But now let's let's show a different way. So we have the same setup. Somebody throwing the ball up in the air at 9.8 meters per second from a height of one meter. And now let's say you're not comfortable with the quadratic equation or you forget what it is. Uh, Let's see what else we can do. So 
one thing that we can do is to break this picture up into several different pieces. So this is our initial picture. So let's call this step one. Step two will be now the ball has reached its max height. So the ball is at max height. And when something reaches its max height, the velocity will be zero. You still have the same acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8. Okay. Step three, let's make it so that the ball is now moving at some velocity. We'll call it V3. Still has the same acceleration downwards. And we'll say that it's at the starting height. So height equals one meter. For the starting height. And then four, the ball will be at its final velocity on the ground, and the height is zero. And again, the same acceleration point down. So let's get to step two and let's figure out how long it takes to get to number two in our diagram. All right, so maybe a, a better way to draw this will be to plot y position as a function of time. So we're going to start at one meter and our graph will be a parabola like this. So this point is point one, max height, be point two. This will be point three, and this will be point four. Okay. So solving for point two's time, we have we know the initial velocity at time one was 9.8 meters per second. We know the final velocity is zero. We know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we wanna find the time so we plug into this equation, solving for A, we get V final minus V initial. Over, oh, solving for T, sorry. And that's zero minus 9.8 over 9.8, so t equals one second. All right. Now, if my art skills were better, we would see that our parabola is going to be symmetric between points one and point two. Uh, so my hypothesis for the time 
to go from uh, point two to point three is going to equal the time it took to go from point one to point two. So I'm going to guess that t from two to three equals one second. So let's calculate that. Again, we can use the same equation, v final. I guess we don't want to do that. We could do that if we make some assumptions, but let's not make those assumptions. So I guess the first thing we need to do is figure out how high this thing goes. Uh, so let's find the max height. Okay, so I'm going to use this kinematic equation, my final, my initial plus v initial t plus one half a t squared. So we can plug in our numbers now. So we know y initial plus one meter, the initial velocity is 9.8 meters per second, time is one second, the acceleration is negative 9.8, and the time is one second again, and then we square that, and we end up with y final is 5.9 meters. Okay, so now we can, we can use this to calculate the time that it takes to go from the max height at point two to returning to the same height that it started with at point three. So we're gonna use the same kinematic equation, but now we're going from two to three, whereas up here we were going from one to two. Y final equals Y initial plus V e initial T plus one half A T squared. Okay, so now at point two, we have no initial velocity. Our final height, we're going to return to the same one meter that we started at. Our initial height is this 5.9 meters. Our acceleration is still due to gravity, and we're solving for the time. So let's isolate the time. So this will be y final minus y initial equals one half a t squared. So divide by one half a t, so that'll be two y final minus y initial over nine point, not putting the numbers yet, over a equals t squared. So take the square root of both sides, and you get t equals square root two y final minus y initial over a, and then if you plug in our numbers, this is two times 5.9 minus one, or minus, yeah, minus one over negative 9.8. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get one second as the time to go from 0.2 to 0.3. So this is the one second and if you remember earlier, we guessed that it was going to take one second to go from two to three because it took one second to go from one to two. And that's because a parabola is symmetric. 
So this is something that can help you speed up a problem. Uh, let's say you're doing a projectile motion problem and you are starting and ending at the same height. You can calculate the time that it takes to go from the starting position to the maximum height and then just double that time for the total flight time. So in the problem that we're working on, we're not starting from the same, uh, starting and ending at the same height. So you could still use this method, but you'd have to know that you have to do a little extra work on top of just doubling the time. So let's do that. So here we're going from position three to position four. So at position three, our height is, so our y initial, maybe I'll call it y3 is one meter. Our velocity at point three, we haven't solved for yet. Our acceleration is still a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we want to know the time it takes to go from three to four. And we also don't know what our velocity is going to be at the end. So first we need to figure out what the velocity of the ball is going to be at point three before we can solve for the time to go from three to four. So let's calculate the velocity at three. So this, to do that, we're going to go back to when we were going from point three, two to point three. Okay, so the time we calculated to go from two to three was one second. The velocity at point two was zero meters per second. And the acceleration is the constant 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so we can use this kinematic equation to solve for the final velocity, which would be V3. And this is zero, because V2 is zero. So we just have negative 9.8 times the time, which was one second. And so the velocity at three is negative 9.8 meters per second. And again, you could assume that it's gonna be negative 9.8 because the initial velocity was 9.8 and everything is symmetric. So this is just to show that that is in fact the case. Okay, so now going back to uh, this three to four, so now we know V3 equals negative 9.8 meters per second. So let's try to calculate the time to go from three to four. So I've got a y3. I also know that y4 is gonna be zero on the ground. So let's use the, let's see, let me write down the kinematic equations really quick. Okay, so I want to solve for the time. 
So I'm probably going to need the last equation. But if I use the last equation, I would need to do another quadratic formula, which is what we are trying to avoid. So there's two, two ways that we can get out of this. So the first is to just uh, accept that we have to do the quadratic formula, or we can calculate what v4 is. So v4 is going to equal v3 plus a t second kinematic equation. Okay, so we're solving for V4. V3 is negative 9.8 squared. 2 times negative 9.8. And delta Y, we're going to start at 1 meter and go to 0. So that's just 1. And so we're going to take the square root of all this. And when we plug that into our calculators, 10.754 meters per second. Okay. So now that we have V4, we could plug into this equation to solve for time. Okay, so rearrange this for time. Looks like this. And then plugging those numbers in, you get 10.754 minus 9.8. And I guess this, so when you take the square root, it's plus or minus. We have to select the minus root because our velocity is pointing downward. And when you do all that, you get a time of about 0.1 seconds. Okay, so now our total time will be the time to go from one to two plus the time to go from two to three plus the time to go from three to four which was 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.1, which is 2.1 seconds. And if you remember uh, what we did from the kinematic formula, or the quadratic formula, that was the time that we got. So uh, as you can see, it's much faster to just use the quadratic formula. But if for some reason you can't remember it or you don't feel comfortable with it, there are ways to work around that. Uh, and an another thing that I wanted to show, um, so we had this 
uh, y versus time graph. We started at one meter. Uh, another way you can solve this problem uh, to make it easier for yourself, let's just define these three points. Uh, so the time to go from point one to point two um, was the one second that we found. Uh, but what if you calculate the, the time to go from point two to point three all in one shot? So let's do that. So the velocity at point two is going to be zero because it's at the top of its arc. The acceleration is still negative 9.8. The height, y initial, or I guess we'll call it y2, that we calculated earlier was five point five point nine meters. We know that y3 is going to be zero meters, and we want to find the time to go from two to three. Just using the right approach. Okay. Y final equals y initial plus v initial t plus a t squared over two. Okay. So the final height, so let's rewrite this with our threes and twos. Y two plus V two T plus A T squared over two. So this term just goes to zero because our Velocity at point two was zero. Our y three is zero. And so we get negative y two equals a t squared two. So solve for t, you would get minus two y two over a equals t squared. Take the square root. And then plug in your values minus two times five point nine negative nine point eight. And that gives you a time of 1.1 seconds. This was the time to go from two to three. So if you want your total time, which was t from one to two, plus time from two to three, that gives you your one plus 1.1, which is the same 2.1 seconds that we had before. Okay, so all that really just to show that there's always more than one way, not always, but there's usually more than one way to solve a physics problem. And if you get stuck one way, like you forget the quadratic formula or you don't have a calculator and the math is too hard. Uh, there are other ways to go about solving the problem.
This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.